Hello. Welcome back. I want to continue with this uh, tree, the scenery with the barn, and see how far we can get. Um, I decided I was, I'm not going to put the little goat I wanted just yet. I may not do it. And also, I'm, if you noticed, I did put in this little addition of a little shack next to the barn because um, I decided that that's what the study showed and some of you that want to follow that probably wanted me wanted to see how I framed that area. So, okay, there we go. Um, also, I decided that I, I'm going to, I, all of this I, for now, anyways, I got it all mostly green. And I am going to do um, some tall grasses here probably. And uh, um, I would like some flowers, maybe peonies or something like that in this area. And so let's go. Let's see what happens. I've got the primaries. And um, I think I'm going to start with the, some of the trees on this side. Now I like to come in here, we're going to go right next to that barn, that edge frame that side, frame it up a bit. See, that's going to make that come out. And so you go, you use your negative space. You're gonna have some, a tree here. That's why I mark that with a little bit of red just to kind of see if it was a pleasing um, shade and I did it very uh, thinly so that it, I can easily just um, cover it up with the, the foliage, the green. I have some trees there. I'm going to need to put in my palette here my colors. I need some. I'm gonna need some white and some uh, raw umber, which uh, I have to get out from. on framing that barn right in here right behind this shack it's going to be I want it to be quite dark that's going to bring out the shack and that side of the barn. It's got, it's showing too much of the just blue. So I added a little bit of yellow to my brush, the tip of my brush. So that made that into a dark and uh, kind of a rich looking uh, green, which will be the shaded area of that tree here. All right, so now with this jaggedy brush, I'm adding kind of like the top and side of that tree.
Now you can skip some areas because we're doing like a little grass and maybe some bald areas. It don't doesn't have to be so uniform. Now here is like some bushes, so I kind of want to get it not so perfect. I want some little leaves, see the blades of grass going up into that side of the, the wall of that barn. Okay, so now I want to get darker. Now that I've got my raw umber here, I'm going to mix that with my ultramarine blue, almost half and half, and see how dark that gets. It's nice dark, but it's not a dead black hole on your canvas. So that's how you do that. Half and half, half ultramarine blue and half um, raw umber. And then you can go stipple, stipple, so it looks organic like a tree, like some part of the tree, most of the tree and some bushes up in here. And just block it in. And you just have to be careful right next to that barn, the, the, that roof. It's okay if you mess up a little, no problem, you just have to clean it up a bit. A little lighter color, a little lighter green, and certain on the top at top uh, of those bushes because um, that's where the light hits it, and you keep your darks underneath. Okay. Now I'm also going to come back now with a dark with a little bit lighter and hit it up in here so that again I have I, I will end up with a, a light medium and dark in this area here okay that's kind of a medium I'm gonna go over here Want, I don't want it to look too much like a Christmas tree, so I'm going to bring it in here like that. Okay. Eventually, I think I'm also going to want to add some, a um, little more color to the sky. Let me clean this up a bit. I got a little too much much brown in there thinking that maybe I can start putting some of the Some distant, I think I want some distant hills or mountains in the back. And so I mixed a little bit of the, the red, the cool red with ultramarine blue and some white. Now it's a little got now it's it's a violet color. Now if it's too bright, then we tone it down with a little bit of raw umber it mixed into that. If it's starting to get like too bright, that's one way to tone it down.
Now it's very important for you, something that's very helpful, is to have always accessible um, some napkin, napkin um, or paper towels or a carry cloth, um, cloth or something so that you can adjust the color and the values, the amount, basically what it is, is the amount of um, paint that you have in your brush. See, I want to make this mountain kind of soft and hazy so it's not too prominent and I don't want, for sure you don't want a purple mountain right now. I mean sometimes you do but not right now. I want this to make it far away and when I first uh, put the color in it was a little too much which is fine because then you adjust it. So that's what I'm doing now by adding a little bit of titanium white to that edge. So I'm making that of soft, soft edges, still violet, but far away. So see, I am constantly cleaning up the edge of that brush. And sometimes it's important to have a, a, I like to always have a dry brush so that I can, see, it's also always have a, a dry brush that you can count on in case you need to pick up some paint that you don't want. So there. Okay. These are just little things that are kind of important that you don't think about sometimes when you're painting. Now, if you always... See, you always want to have a three or four ready to use. I noticed that some of those um, artists, very famous, very popular masters, there are some self-portraits or somebody else, others, other artists would maybe do a portrait of them and there's many times when I've seen that they have half a dozen brushes in the one hand because it's ready for them. So I have a few, maybe three or more ready to, to use or to, or to clean, to use to clean little areas that you might get into. See how I'm coming in now with this little brush and bringing some of that foliage simulating some leaves I, and leaving some spaces of um, blue sky like it hap like what happens in real nature in, in Now in this area where we were very dark, I'm going to come in even a little darker. In here like this. Because I want to wipe out some tree trunks. And in order, if you're going to wipe something out, 
you need to have enough paint in there to do that. Okay, so I'm going to come with a brush that they use. You, when you do that, you need to have something that's kind of stiff so you can use your wipeout tool. Now, in some areas, you wipe out, and some, and then there will be other areas where this, where it starts getting uh, lighter. That's where you want to add some branches, some dark branches. This is a very twisted brush you know not on purpose it just something happened to it I don't know but it still works but see it's kind of funny looking don't it still works for for crooked little branches it still works all right so now some of them are a little bit thick so you can come back and modify them. You can say, oh, that got too much. It's still a pretty good time to do it because the paint is still, it's all wet. So you can not do, always do it even after it dries, but it's just easier to do it now. And so you have some dark branches, some thin branches, some thick ones. And um, there again, we're, use, we're going for different things, not always the same. So this is why I'm coming back in here. And on those, on those uh, wiped out branches, I'm adding a little bit of some dark color, see? Some dark, some dark. shadows you can darken in between now that they're wiped out you can come back and even emphasize that darkness between certain branches even more if you want, if you. Everybody's is going to be quite different. Okay, now I got too dark in there and too big, those leaves are too big. So I'm coming back here and just get re getting rid of them with my cheapy Daiso brush. It's wonderful for that. Okay, so basically that's what you want to do. Now let me see if I can come back and open that. <clears throat> Let's see. This here, it still seems to me that that tree, I need to, um, oops, I need to come back and open it up a little bit. I think it's too, um, too 
straight right here. I want to come in. And so I'm going to do that by adding some uh, sky in that area. Let's see. But in order to do that, I need kind of a clean brush, sort of clean. Okay, so for some reason that always keeps reminding me of a Christmas tree, which is a wonderful thing, but I, but not right now, I don't want it to be, I like Christmas, I do like Christmas trees, but not, not here for some reason. Okay, I think that did it. I think I got rid of that sh conical shape. I know what I we, what we can do is make two trees out of it. Like this one would be one, and this is another one. So I've got a little bit of dark green in my brush, and I'm coming in this direction to shade it. See, that's a lot better. That makes a tree that's far out here. And that's this one. Now also, let's get a little bit um, and see if we can make a little bit of uh, branches on that tree in the back. And I think we did, we could, we were able to do it. Now that's a lot more interesting than how we had, than how I had it, right? I think, I think it is. You can do that, and sometimes you can scratch them out with your palette knife. Let me see here. Okay, so now I'm coming here with this. Alright, so that's basically how we're going to do the foliage in here. 
I'll have to come back, add a little more lighter color in here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to learn, figure out how to make those uh, the certain areas of the painting where you speed it up a bit so that um, I can get more, show you more, advance it. Okay, and so now in this area here, the same thing. I want to add a little bit into those bushes. Now, I think what this is going to be is just more greenery, more trees. Now, at this, right in this area, there's like grassiness. So I come and just kind of stipple with my messy, raggedy brush to get some texture in there. At some point, I'm going to add a little bit like a door and a little shading. But here I'm going to have the grass, the tall grass. And in order to have something to wipe out, you got to have enough color in there. So here we go by adding more In a way, I'm trying to like frame this area, bring the eye back to this barn. Okay, so we're going to leave this area for a little bit. And I'm going to work on the side, the tree over here. All right. Let's see this. I'm going to have to work sideways. Now, in the, in here, I think I want to open it up a little bit. Okay, okay. that works. And I'm going to have this uh, shrubbery, this faraway trees kind of continue over here. Part of the sky, since the sky continues, and we have that those trees. Uh, so I'm going to have some flowers, so 
I'm darkening with the raw umber ultramarine blue so that I have a darker separation in this uh, trees. from the floral, like a hedge look, hopefully. So now I'm going to come in here and try to see if I can uh, do something like that looks like flowers. Or So it's the same type of brush that's raggedy at the um, tip. It's a very inexpensive brush. It's, it's when it's when the paint starts getting a little bit draggy, like it's dragging, not cooperating, then that's the time when I go into my liquid or linseed oil, whichever one you pick. You just don't want to get it too. too oily or too wet. I'm not sure, maybe that looks like um, Lavender or something like that. I'm not sure that's what it was, but a variety of flowers. Okay, I think I'm going to also have some other type, maybe. get a little darker. Even these flowers will be darker at the bottom. See, because they are casting a shadow. So we need to separate the I'm not 
sure if this is going to be okay, but I'm going to have some. So um, it's a little more vibrant. Now I'm going to do some of the grass in here. All grassy. Kind of blend this together. Now I want this to be not perfectly like a fringe, but it, a little bit, it can look a little bit like a fringe, but now I'm coming in with some green and breaking up that strip of um, floral. Flowers, you want some of them? Okay, so now I'm going to work, I'm going to do a few of these little bits of blades of grass and I'm going to stop for now. I think we're almost done, but this is what you can work on. We, you got your dark area here, so you're going to come in here with your light paint, light yellow green. And um, we're going to make some blades of grass. Yeah, some of them can be long and some of them can be short. And some of them can go one direction, and then some can go the other.
right way and see if you can see what's going on there okay now in this area here that we darken you can start doing some blades of grass or also you can have some more uh, floral um, you can experiment and see what you like see what you what you you um, decide or some of those that tall grass that we had on the other one let's see if this works a little bit Well, that did a little something. And so this just gets another and I'm going to come back and add to it with my crooked little brush. here so where it's dark you go light where it's light over here you can go a little bit darker to show the blades of grass okay I'm going to stop right now. I think we're almost done. I'm not sure. I might add some floor, a little bit of some florals in here just to break it up a bit. But I do want some of that, those uh, tall grass blades of grass in here. But, you know, feel free to do your own thing. This is just a sample of something that I, I'm just coming up with it right now you know, as we go here, but, um, okay, so that's what we have, I'm still going to do a little more over here, maybe I might do another, another take just to add a little bit of, um, some grasses, a little bit of flowers in this area, so, all right, thank you for watching.